And we're back. Welcome back to Bottom Earth here in Duncanstein, where we run on rabbits. Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole, where the sludge is finally moving to the top, where you will be able to skim the scum of that gutter oil that has been propagating all over your body. And you're welcome for what we're about to do to your ears. Yes, don't freak out. Like people are freaking out about the 15 minute cities. The uh, fact checkers are back. We had a whole epidemic of them when we were talking about the PayPal incidents. I don't know if you guys remember the the PayPal misinformation. They were going to take all your money out of your account. I when, remember. Yeah, when we were reporting on that, we had people from CNN and whoever writing articles about us how they didn't want us to talk about it. Now they're back. You go to our Instagram page, you'll see that individuals like Dana Ford is talking about how the 15-minute city is not really what we think it is. So clearly they don't want us to talk about that, which we all know why. They want us to keep us in a human zoo. You guys check out Desmond Morris about his human zoo concept. It's I think it's spot on. And I think the WEF, the World Economic Forum, is just taking it straight out of his book. But we have a lot on the tab. I hope you guys are ready. We are going to be bringing things about the 15-minute cities, how they are trying to use you as a guinea pig, as a psychological experiment. Also, I hope your mind is prepared to hear whatever is on my colleague's tab, the infamous toilet tab. I know it's jam-packed by Alice herself. Oh, poor chop. But before we get started, we got to do the infamous flush, the royal flush. So here in three, two, one, welcome to Toilet Time TV, the source for your aches and pains, because you haven't been satisfied. The butter for your bread. The gutter oil. For your mind. Where the people and the rest of the world want to feed you nonsense. Keep on chewing those great rates of savings. Stick your money where your mouth is. Take that programmable cash. Exorb the righteousness. Exorb or absorb? I don't know. But whatever it is, whatever's proceeding out of my mouth, take that. Well, you just got goosebumps. The, the, this whole entire world is propagating more and more that it's just a huge social experiment, which causes me even more to believe that we really are in a simulation. At minimum, like we are, as you see on the men in black, a marble that aliens have in their locker somewhere or something. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, basic simulation theory. Once humans can create simulations, those simulations can create simulated worlds and then once you have multiple simulated worlds creating simulated worlds you'll just never know if you're in a simulated world because what it comes down to is <clears throat> either we're the first people who created the simulated world like we because it seems like we don't know how to make a perfect simulated world yet so it's one of the two we're either the first or the last we're either the first people who are almost there or we're the last group the one who haven't figured it out yet because the one before us has just created us. So we're still trying to figure out how to make a simulated world. So then the next, then we'll create one and then they'll have to work on building one. So everything takes time and progression. So we're either the first group or the last group. Or, you know, we could just be a link in the chain in the middle. Well, no, because if we're in the middle, we should have already, because if we're in the middle, that means there's something below us. No, I'm saying, yeah, but I'm saying like we can create a simulation eventually and uh, yeah, we could have probably created two simulations within our original simulation. So we have another simulation trying to build like like a break off. Yeah, I guess you could have that. But we would still at least have to be able to make simulations because there would have to be ones under us, which means we made one. But anyways, the whole point is that's what it just feels like. It feels like this whole thing's just a big psychological game. We don't know what is real or not. We try to. But now there's actual mathematicians saying we can't say one plus one equals two anymore. Because it might be offensive. Yeah. Even math. I think my colleague's going to talk about it's progressing not only into algorithmic questionability, 
but possibly even sociological questionability, like maybe it's racist. Well, that's that's basically it. It's just math is racist because it's uh, it's too uh, binary and anything that has to deal with you know ones and zeros and absolutism, it's racist. Yeah, but we'll get more into that later because this this is a jam packed episode. I mean, it's stuffed. I mean, it's like a, a cannoli. <laughs> so I hope you're ready. It's like an animal. But the first thing I want to get into is this constant, and I, honestly, I don't know where it's coming from. It's this constant push of trying to reject the legitimacy of things we all can see constantly. Mm. This week, like I, I was talking about in our intro, Dana Ford, apparently some reporter from Lead Stories is propagating the idea that 15-minute cities are not what they are propagated to be, or at least what people are saying they are. And not only did she disprove it, she actually disproved it through TikTok and YouTube. She thinks that that's probably some kind of worthy cause. She's fighting for truth. The fat che- they're fat checkers. They're fact checkers and fat checkers. They probably are measuring my BMI as I talk. I just think it's silly. Anybody can go online and look at what the World Economic Forum is talking about with these 15-minute cities. This is not like some new concept. Yeah, but TikTok says, I mean, according to Dana White, TikTok disproves that. And so does YouTube. But so does everybody. That's why we're in a simulation. Feels like it even more. It's like, yes, we see it all. We know it's true. Oh, but here's TikTok and it's false. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> if TikTok says it, you have to believe it. It makes us go crazy. It's like we know we're reading something. It's real. And then somebody comes along and says, no, it's not real. It's all fake. It's well, all they, lies. They, they have YouTube and TikTok on their side. So who can disagree with that? You know what? why I'm saying it's hard? You have leaders like Swab over there at the World Economic Forum propagating these as necessities for the incoming societal rule, the Agenda 2030, America 2050. Does this Dana recognize Swab as being existing? Like, or does she say he doesn't well, even Well, I haven't seen or? any fact checkers blocking the World Economic Forum content. Well, not yet. Well, if they do, that's going to be weird. <laughs> I don't see what's so weird about it. I mean, if, if TikTok says that Carl Swab doesn't exist or whatever his name is. I mean, well, what I, why I'm saying it is, is it seems like what they're trying to do is make it seem like 15 minute cities is a good thing. It's a positive thing. It's not here to keep you like a zoo. I think that's why they didn't like it is because I was correlating Desmond Howard, Desmond Morris's idea of a human zoo, a force capsulation of people in a structured society, which causes them to act out irrationally because they're confined in an area with provided resources, which makes them get bored, which then causes them to do weird things outside of normality because they're not in nature anymore. That's Desmond Morris's idea. And clearly that would be an idea of a 15 minute city. If not, why not let just people roam as they will be free as they will. That's the American dream. Why construct them into this limited group? And, I mean, don't you think it's perfect with programmable money? I mean, think about it. These programmable coins, currencies, they're going to be inside your phone, right? And your phone is trackable. So let's say they have these wireless boundaries around this 15-minute city. If you go out of the city, your money won't work because it's programmable. There's no cash. So once you leave, because you need to, some kind of electronic device, a phone or something, once you leave, it's going to cross that barrier, that Wi-Fi barrier, and um, automatically it's going to deactivate your account. It's just like these Amazon stores. I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure you've seen it. Yes. Where you can walk in, there's nobody in there. You can pick up something and walk right out, and it just discounts the money out of your Amazon account. There's nobody in there. Now, think about that same technology, and they do it with your personal bank account. You walk, if once you go into the 15-minute city, your account works. You can buy anything within there. But once you get out, they just deactivate your account. Sounds really convenient. Well, I'm saying once you get out of the city, you can't use money no more. Let's say you want to go to another 15-minute city. Too bad. This is your city. This is your district. This is straight Hunger Games stuff. And that's the stuff they don't want you to know. That's what they say. 
Oh, 15 minute cities isn't to confine people. You know what's funny is that Hunger Games movie, all the leaders looked real goofy with weird hair, weird makeup, and everything. But if you watch that now, they don't look so goofy. No, they don't. They're, they're fitting right in with the people that don't like math and everything else. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, they, they actually look kind of normal, especially since they were the leaders. The leaders were actually the goof troops. Shout out to Goofy. Well, who else would say stupid stuff like this? I mean, normal average working people realize normal average working reality, which is, uh, I want to go do something. Let me do it. I didn't break no laws. And then the goof troops are coming along and like, what is a law? Oh, the law. Hmm. Let me just create a law. And let's see if we can make the average working person follow this abstract law. We're at the precipice. And that's, that's, that's why they decide to color their hair. Magenta. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even appreciate things anymore because it might be offensive. Everything is offensive. Yeah, and we talked about it many, many, many months ago. It's that paradox of intolerance or tolerance, either way. Any extreme, the paradox of extremities. If you tolerate something to the unk end of it, eventually you're going to have to become intolerant of the one who doesn't want to be tolerant. And so it doesn't work. It's, it's, but that's a binary function. of a, That's paradoxes require a binary function. True, two beliefs at some point at its far end is going to cause a conflict of interest. South Park actually has an episode on that where there's this general who like is telling all the people that he will not tolerate intolerance They're like in his boot training camp. It's interesting. That's the beauty of comedy. That's why when we see comedians get attacked and try to get shut down, you know the world is over. Because that's the whole point of comedy. It's those internal thoughts that we all have. That we're afraid to say because we're trying to practice the social etiquette so we can maintain our life. So we restrict those things. We hold our mouth. But comedy, the comedians, they'll say, to, that's why we laugh. They say the things that we want to say, but they don't care. They'll take that risk. And that's why they're the jesters. They are meant to be laughed at. And we all appreciate it because they finally get to say something that we want to say. But when we start seeing those jesters get shut down, you know it's over. If you can't even laugh at yourself, you already know it's over. You've gone too far. You need to reanalyze yourself. And you may be related to Will Smith. <sighs> yeah, well, you know, Shout out to Slappy. <laughs> All I can say, sometimes we need, some, we need some counseling and therapy. You need to let some things go. There is a puppet. Shout out to Goosebumps. And his name is Slappy. That slaps. Yeah, it does. He does slap, too. It's probably the coolest puppet I've ever seen. If they ever remake Goosebumps... Will Smith, they need to make this slappy puppet look like Will Smith. I think it would only be fitting. And that's what's sad. You were talking about it last week, that parents need to be aware of what's on YouTube kids. You, you know, I've noticed this. Comedians are used for adults to express that internal frustration that they can't let out on a daily basis. So they, la they look watch comedians because it helps them. It's almost like therapy. It helps them feel like, Somebody sees what I see. I'm not going crazy. But then I've noticed that the government uses children's shows to re-indoctrinate the ideas that comedians are trying to help express the truth of. So a comedian might be over here trying to help people understand, yeah, I see what the government's doing. And they'll make fun of the government. And we all feel like, good. At least I'm not crazy. Somebody's out there seeing the same thing. But then you'll watch something like Sesame Street where they're trying to re-indoctrinate the very thing that comedians are trying to say we all know is true. It's like, we all know the government's our friend. We all know the government's here to help us. They're not here to hurt us. 15-minute cities are good. They're going to help us really unite together as one central group of people. Welcome to Agenda 2030. My name's Big Bird. And it's this weird cycle. So... It's almost like as you get older, they let you say, who cares? You're going to die off anyway. Believe whatever you want. But the young groups of people, we're not going to let you laugh. We're going to really indoctrinate you with Big Bird and Oscar Mayer Wiener and everything else. Well, the kids would laugh if they had some kind of life experience, but they don't because they don't understand what the joke is. But yeah, like, yeah, when I mentioned uh, the kids YouTube showing uh, like a video of Spider-Man dry humping Elsa or something. 
somebody created that. Now, there's no nudity, but these two cl- fully clothed uh, characters are dry humping each other. Now, an adult may watch that and laugh at it because it's funny, but a kid isn't going to laugh at that. They're just going to say, oh, so this is how they do it on Animal Planet. Shout out to Steve. Yeah, I'm but not about I think some of this is a reflection of our societies, like on a microcosm. You know, it spreads out. If the parents feel like they can't say things because they know they're trying to prevent their children from getting, getting harmed because they need to learn social etiquette too, eventually that trains the child to accept these governmental propagandas. But if a parent, like you, you've seen it, like if a parent's a free parent, a free spirit, the children end up becoming more of a free libertarian idea too. Not liberals, but like a free libertarian function. Like, I'm just going to go to school and say whatever. What if you have a transparent Like, they're actually see-through. That's too free. You don't even know anything at that point. Oh, wow. You're see-through. Oh. You know, you see that. A child just goes in there and says, I have a question. But you notice all the other other children, they're very structured, very rigid, waiting for, to see if they're giving the proper response. And I think it's just a construction of our society. When parents get so constricted to the idea that if I say the wrong thing, I'm going to get punished. It's going to, children are replicators. They're going to replicate that. But if you allowed a city or a country or a nation to be free, truly free, without thought police, then you'll notice the children wouldn't buy in the propaganda either. You're right. I think they're, they're believing all that because they see their parents follow this etiquette, this structure. So they think this is what I'm supposed to do is follow the structure. But if they saw their parents mocking and saying, well, you know, this is propaganda. You need to question this stuff. Well, then children would replicate their parents over anybody then they're going to question Big Bird and the rest of this propaganda. It's hard. Comedians is almost like the government's way of saying, your time is up. We'll let you laugh. But we got your children. Well, anyways, I, I'm going to conclude this little segment here and let my colleague go into the next thing. But I just wanted to bring out these two articles, which I'm not going to talk about. It's just emphasizing this idea that they don't want you to think for yourself. Bloomberg and Forbes both talk about this idea of a case study in conspiracy paranoia, dealing with 15-minute cities, and they call it a freak out. So they use this idea of in UK, apparently in Oxford, there's this traffic control plan where they want to adjust certain ways that you have to go this way and this way, and if you violate this, and we're going to have cameras watching you, and if you don't do this, this, and this, we're going to automatically send you tickets and all that stuff. And people are afraid that this is just the beginning or the prelude to a 15-minute city. It's a prison state. They're watching everything. Cameras are everywhere. And at the end, they're just going to, and and with programmable money, they're just going to take it all away. So you have to realize you're just a big guinea pig. You can't throw us all in jail. You know, in America, that's the one thing that everybody fears. You know, people think that America can't be invaded because of our great military. That's not the case. We got something greater than the military. There's 350 million people in America. For every one person in America, I think they say there's like two guns. So let's say there's 600 million guns. If anybody comes to America to invade, we only have like three or four million soldiers. But we got 600 million guns. Yeah, but half of those people are confused. Doesn't matter. I guarantee you all these Americans, if people start coming over to America, like China or Russia or anybody, and they start killing people, all these confused people will unite in one theme. You're going to unite the confused masses. And that's the real reason why America can't be invaded. And this is the real reason why all this Fugazi that the government can create martial law. You know why the government doesn't force martial law all over the whole United States in one hit? Because there's all these guns. And because of freedom. Yeah, well, absolutely. It is because of freedom. That libertarian spirit that says, you're not going to hold me down. That 1776 malicious spirit. No, it says, let those things ring. So that is the real thing. We have the biggest army in the world, which is all the citizens with with firearm access. Freedom is actually an acronym for firearm, reproduction, everyone, everywhere. Never heard that before. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just think about it. If America went to China, it's not like everybody's got guns. And so there, there's some point they're going to run out. But in America, 
even the military don't issue these guns. These are just Americans freely buying their own guns. And they're like, you know what? Don't tread on us. Yeah. Anyways, I just want you guys to know we are going to continue talking about whatever these fact checkers are trying to avoid and prevent us from talking about. So Dana Ford, be on the lookout. And the rest of you at Lead Stories, Politico, whoever else, all of you guys have come after us at one point or another. Instagram, Facebook, all of you social media platforms have come after us. And whatever we see, we're just going to emphasize that more because we know that is something that you don't want us to talk about. The more you rub us the wrong way, the harder we get. Yeah, and so we're just going to keep talking about it. We don't care. Because this is Toilet Time TV, Bottom Earth Media. We are going to keep feeding you until the scum rises to the top, and then you can rub that gutter oil all over your body. And we will stand erect. And we will stand strong. So keep telling everybody about the 15-minute cities, because clearly they don't want that to be spread, and keep telling people that you don't want to be inside of a human zoo. Free the animal spirits. Anyways, what do you have on your tab, your toilet tab, your rabbit hole, Mr. Colleague? Well, inside the rabbit hole. So this woman shows up on Fox News reporting a very scary thing that could happen to anyone. She was raped by three individuals in the metaverse. She went on this metaverse It's a virtual reality online playing site. And three men approached her in this metaverse and they started making very lewd and crude suggestive remarks. Then they started getting closer to her and she couldn't go anywhere. She was backed up into a corner. And then they started making even more suggestive remarks. And this is at the point where she broke down and they just kept on and they kept on. One of the only things she could remember is begging them to stop. But the more she begged them to stop, you know, they just took turns. Is this like the new version of cyberbullying? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't want to downplay what happened. But is this like virtual bullying? This is virtual rapier. This is virtual dancing. Yes. Did she get emotionally distraught? Yeah, she virtually got raped. Is she... Uh... And yes, she is. Like, when you see it, she's actually tearing up. No, I'm saying, is she filing a lawsuit? I don't know. Uh, she's, she's waiting for Facebook to respond is right she, now. Is she going to get, moment. like, virtual lawyers? Is this going to go to virtual court? She probably will. And I, I hope all the best for her virtual avatar. These, what these avatars did to her wasn't right. They had no right to. I, um, I actually think this is interesting because this, <laughs> this actually brings a very good psychological and literal case study of how the virtual world will work. Because if they really do believe in this whole metaverse thing, they're going to have to figure out the the logistics of Boundaries. how this works. Yeah, because, I mean, if you're going to consider it real, then you're going to have to deal with all the real problems. Yeah, like this. Like, now she may virtually get pregnant. And, I mean, what are you going to do? Virtually, <laughs> virtually... I mean, where, where's, do you have choice in there we're gonna have to vote for choice in the metaverse well that's probably not even in the code that's probably not even programmed where these avatars can have children they're already being restricted well then explain this explain how she got well she got assaulted no she literally she says she got raped she got gang raped according to her own terms and she's crying now mind you this is not a teenage girl this is a grown woman a grown she's probably in her late 30s so how can something like this happen to us? I agree. It's like a personification of something, you know. Example. So you have this brand new car. You just bought it from the dealership. You park it. You go into the grocery store. You come out and you see somebody pushing their cart and they just try to throw it into that cart gathering area and it misses and it hits your brand new car and leaves this big dent and scratch. Are you going to personify a identity with your car and get very personal and angry because you're going to, you're going to feel like somebody hit you. Yeah. What about that guy named chase who has oh, yeah, a, yeah, but those are philias. Those, those are fears, phobias, uh, philias. Yeah. Like, uh, preferences, fetishes, but we're just talking about every human being. Almost everyone can identify with what I just said. You have this brand new car. You just dropped like 20 grand on 30 grand on. 
Yeah, maybe let's go to a million grand. Let's go. If somebody hits your car with a cart, you're going to feel like they hit you. You're going to feel personal. And the reason why I'm making that analogy is I can understand in the modern age with the metaverse and the avatars, these people are personalizing their avatars where they feel an identity to it. So if you assault those avatars, they're going to feel like you assaulted them, just like if somebody kicked your car. You're gonna feel. You're gonna get angry. Well, I think I feel like you're putting the carrot before the horse here. You're you're leading the horse. Am I? Am I leading questions on her? A car you just spent, like you said, you know. Uh, oh, so you're associating the value is why. Yeah, like you just spent money, hard earned money on a car. So you may not even personify with the car. It's just now I have to go. It's time. It's energy. I got to go get this dent out, the scratch out, the money. I'm upset. With an somebody, avatar, you didn't pay anything. What if somebody gave you a brand new car? You don't think people would have the feel, same feeling? Like they just gave you a brand new car. I think people would still get mad. I, I've they would seen, still know the value. It's like, I'm still going to have to pay with this now. It might be my car, but now I got to pay for that dent. No, you don't. You got it for free. You don't have to do anything. They bought your problems and now you're paying I think paying if somebody price. even gave somebody a, a, a junker. I think it's a normal thing. Yeah, if you're an I don't care person, then I think you're just not going to care anyways. Who's that rapper that's saying, he's like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. All of them. So you're telling me if I, ri- if I rub chicken grease on my forehead, is one of the lines of his song. Don't be rubbing chicken grease because that's probably from the gutter oil. Maybe. Maybe he was involved in the gang rape of this, I can't say young lady, she's a woman. And you know, this is so stupid. You know the people who are arguing about Avatar rights are the same people who are probably are arguing for all these inclusive ideas, like we shouldn't say absolutes because it's offensive, not understanding that avatars is a function of an absolute binary code. Your avatar doesn't exist without binary code. And these codes have to function within certain executable runs. And it's, it's extremely absolute. There are variables, but those variables need absolute actions. To manifest. You are right. There are people also, as we previously mentioned, there's another woman on another news channel. Can't remember which one that was, but she was talking about how racist math is because, of course, if you don't, if you are inclusive with all your language, then you are automatically racist. That's the logic. So a computer would be racist because it's not inclusive to, let's say, you know, uh, 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 what do they call it? Imaginary numbers. Yeah, you know what's more racist than a computer? Because computers have, you could start saying there's so many variables. I'll tell you what's what's the most racist thing of all, which everybody probably needs to stop using now. Abraham Lincoln. Calculators. The ancient old basic calculator. Not the graphical calculators or anything else. Just the old regular calculator. One plus one equals two. Two plus two equals four. We well, you know the most inclusive item is... The magic eight ball. Well, it's random. Yeah. So you shake it and you'll never, you know, you'll never get the same sequence of answers. You'll get the same, the answers are all. Uh, yeah, but know, see, they, they think about but that. They, but there's the sequence though. <laughs> yeah. The sequence though will never be the same. Yeah, but think about it. It's already been determined. You got this stupid ball in there with maybe 16 random answers, but you're not getting out of it. This is it. You're still stuck in a predetermined binary limit. Yeah, you might have some randomness on the binary limit. And yeah, that's actually, that's how code works. You have variables based upon the binary limit. Yeah, weird things can happen in your AI virtual avatar world, but they're limited. Just like if this avatar wasn't programmed to inseminate and have children, then it's just not. Can't. Yeah, because it's not a part of the limit. Now, can somebody go in and add? Yeah, just like open up the eight ball and make like 18 questions. But at some point, you have to create containers and then the compilers and you have to because this is a program. So, yeah, I I don't know what people are really arguing for. And humans aren't much different. We are limited by our society. But we have free will. Yeah, what what if Freud correlate our society with a super ego? Super free will. A super ego is projecting on you and you are limited by your society. You can only do the limits of it because if you don't, you're going to be considered a anti-social individual which just wants to create chaos. Yeah, you can't have your id without being a kid. Like You can't even spell kid without your id. 
And I'm not saying I, I, I'm propagating Freud and all his ideas are accurate. I, I don't personally agree with a lot of things he said. But the construction of that basic logistical function, that your society is limiting the ideas of who you're going to become, I think is kind of universal. Your house is one society, and then your household operates under the city society, and that operates under the state society, the federal society, and then the global society. And it's going to be crazy. Avatars at some point are going to have more rights than humans. Well, especially the avatar, the gender bender. People are appreciating your, your pun. Well, no, there's the avatar, the airbender, and then there's avatar, the gender bender. Yeah, you know, somebody's probably going to make that. I hope they do. And you guys should send it to us. I'm going to watch that thing with my eyes right now. Actually, you know our logo, the the toilet man, he could be the gender bender because he's inclusive. He doesn't care who sits on him. He's all inclusive. He's taking it all in. He's actually the epitome of inclusive. He doesn't care what you put in him. He doesn't care where it comes from. He doesn't care where what you identify with. He takes it all. <sighs> no man can take it all. The only thing he's exclusive is his time. That's a lot of power. It's toilet time. <sighs> Anyways, moving on. What I think is another thing that we need to realize why people have a problem with 15 minute cities is the idea of UBI, which eventually you're going to see all these things circulate into a central, not a conspiracy, but a central theme for the agenda 2030, America 2050. But think about it. Walmart is saying that they expect 65% of all the workforce to be taken over by automation. And we've been telling you guys all about this automation for the last year. And Walmart now is making it clear. We can't afford it because they're going to blame theft. And that's why you see all these videos like cities in Portland where Walmart says, hey, we're going to have to shut down stores. Too many people are stealing stuff. Well, maybe when they do this, they'll do what they did with the whole COVID thing. And maybe that was just a preluder of what they were getting ready to do. Like, So let's say they'd cut a huge portion, let's say 50% even, they could do that tomorrow and then just do what they did with COVID where like you get these free stimulus checks, you get free unemployment. This would go easy. It'd be easy to swallow. And it would be an easy slide into the Fed now. Well, yeah, the Fed now would just be into the, the Fedverse. <laughs> Eventually they will be into the metaverse. And that, that's why it all needs to be digital. The reason why you need your digital money and that's what I'm saying. You, you see the correlation. UBI is necessary. And they, they slowly integrated with, with back with what is his name, Yang. He was going for president. Anyways, Yang was pushing hard for his presidential ca uh, candidacy. One of his main emphasis is he's going to distribute everybody a thousand bucks every month, the whole United States, rich or poor, as a universal basic income, a UBI. And he was making the idea upon the premise that automation and AI is eventually going to eradicate most of humans' necessity in, job, in a job force. So where are they going to make this money? And so at some point he thinks it's going to be a necessity for people to have a universal basic income. And then you can go play your metaverse game and whatever, and now you have programmable money because if they give you a universal basic income and it's distributed by the government, it's going to be easy to distribute into a digital federal account which then they can control and program. This is just another word, though, for communism. And you, again, community. Like, we'll all be one community sharing equally, distributing equal everything. We're a community, which is communism. And you know what's interesting? You would think that when you make the metaverse, you'll be free, right? But this is the beginning of simulation theory. Because once we all get into the metaverse, we'll all be free. Just like, just, like, just picture how the evolution of... So the societies, in the beginning, the cave people, they thought they were really free. There's no government. It's real communism. This is for the communes. And, you know, they're beating, whoever has the biggest stick beats and wins and everything. But then it evolves into a large group of cavemen, which then they have to create a hierarchy for the best of the group. So it's utilitarianism. And then eventually that grows so big that they have to split and create multiple societies, which then they may have their own individual rules, which then that has to grow and split into a nation. But in the beginning, everybody thought they were super free. But as civilized grows, you need more order because you're trying to appease the greatest good for the greatest number. So some people have to suffer. Some people have to lose their free will. Some people have to lose their rights. Same thing's going to happen in the metaverse. So you think it's free. You know, I'm going to go to another planet. I'm going to do this and this. In the beginning, it will be. 
But eventually they're going to start putting boundaries. Like if you want to go to another planet, you got to pay X amount of dollars or this and this. And eventually you're going to be bound in a 15 minute city in the metaverse. So you're going to be in a 15 minute city in the real world. And then you're going to have to go into a 15 minute city in the metaverse. And then you're going to be in the metaverse saying, you know what, what if I create my own world? I can make my own rules. And then you're going to create a metaverse, get people to get in, and it's going to be free. And then you're, they're going to create 15 minute cities in there. Now you have a third layer of a simulation. What if, we go, we take a trip to the moon with the moon boys. My whole point is, at some point, UBI is correlated with all of this. So your 15-minute cities, they're going to give you a universal basic income, which you will take because it's free money. Who's not taking free money? Which will be forcing you to get a federal account that they can control your programmable free money. Now, I guess you could reject the free money, reject the 15-minute city, reject all the free stuff. But it's very hard for us to do that because we want to conserve our energy and reap the highest reward. That's just every creature. It doesn't matter who you are and what you are. And when you see opportunities to get free money, free basically energy, and free time, eventually what happens is that you will take it. Now, how many of you are going to say you're not going to take it? Maybe the people who have a lot of money, people who feel like they're well off. But for those who aren't, they're going to take it. And the more you feel isolated or the more your jobs get taken by automation, what are you going to do? So you're jobless. You have a family. Your mortgage is getting foreclosed on. What are you going to do? You're going to take the free money. You're going to take the free house. You're going to take the free food. And you're going to live in a 15-minute city with your programmable money and your programmable account. And this is all correlated into one big force to create back into these controlling domestical societies. So the elites can throw us into a zoo and they can live however they want outside being the observer. Because for every zoo, there has to be an observer. But anyways, I just wanted to bring that out to light because there has been a paper written by the Tony Blair Institute that a proposal for Web3 based universal basic income has been distributed and the reason why it's Web3 is because they want to focus on a blockchain ledger construction for the distribution of UBI. So all this time that I've been talking about a federal blockchain, it's going to be the essence of how they distribute the UBI system. They need a digital system so they can control what people do with this free money. And that's what Web3 is, is basically a blockchain decentralized system. But instead of being decentralized per se, it's just going to be centralized within the federal's blockchain system. The federal, And they're going to have their own ledgers, which are going to be validated. Their validators are going to validate those ledgers. But they're going to be authorized exclusively. Everybody's not going to be able to set up a pool and be some kind of uh, set up a node and be a, a, a validator of the node. They're probably going to give that to a small centered groups like there's 12 central there's 12 central federal reserve banks that's what makes up the federal reserve and so what i'm thinking is those 12 existing federal banks are going to be the 12 validators that validate all the transactions on the blockchain for the federal blockchain so the federal reserve will create this whole network this blockchain network and then they will use their own 12 federal banks as validators of the ledger. So it will be called a centralized ledger because you need somebody to verify the transactions. And who's going to verify? They're not going to let you or me, like Bitcoin, anybody can open up a Bitcoin miner, which creates these little, pro, these little puzzles, solves them, which verifies transactions on the ledger. So anybody could be a verifier of the ledger on Bitcoin. But they're not going to allow that on the Federal Reserve. It's going to be a centralized ledger. So they're probably going to use these 12 existing federal banks to be the validators of the federal blockchain. I don't know why they don't just hire Dana to validate these kinds of things. That might be a good idea. So, hey, uh, Jerome Powell, get all the fact checkers, line them all up in together and put one to each federal bank and then let them audit your federal reserve so we can finally get an audit on the federal reserve that we never have done in all existence since 1913 because you won't let us audit you? Well, it's a win-win. I mean, all these fact checkers, they need purpose in life and you can give it to them. Well, first let them check you. Let them audit the federal reserve and then they can audit all of us 
and they could be the validators. But first, you need to let them audit you, the Federal Reserve, because we would really love to see where all this money has been going for the last 110 years. Well, I don't think they would want to bite the hand that wipes them. If they're getting wiped by Powell, they don't want to tarnish that. So they're not going to audit them or fact check Powell or anybody that is paying them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to know. You would have to actually stack it from the ceiling to the floor. I can count binarily, so I think I got it. I still believe one plus one equals two, so Very I think I can do it. racist thing to say. I think I can do it. You know, they're probably the people who believe one plus one equals three, and that's how they create this fake money with interest. Well, that's how they talk to Biden, because Biden talks like that. It's like, ask him, ask him, is a little bit? I think Biden this week was talking about his favorite ice cream. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it was this week. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it was when he was trying to address the uh, shooting, how the shooter actually got misgendered, which I don't know how anybody could do. But yeah, instead of addressing the transgender shooter being misgendered, he was addressing his ice cream. Yeah, I think he's like, I have a refrigerator upstairs and it's stuffed to the brim from the ceiling to the floor. Yeah. He loves that ice cream. He likes being sandwiched. And smash burgers. If you can gum it, that's the best because you know, eating ice cream with your teeth uh, it just hurts. What else is on that digital toilet tab? <laughs> <laughs> digital toilet. <laughs> well, something has been circulating on TikTok. I know Dana's going to love this. This is her source. So it's the idea that if you have a piece of paper and you put it up to a mirror, the mirror should not be able to see what's behind the piece of paper. But you can. If you take your phone and you film, the mirror will actually show you that there is a, a computer mouse on the other side. And that's not supposed to be doable, according to Dana White's source. Or Dana, not White. <laughs> like you said, what was her last name? Dana Fords. And I don't think she's related to Harrison. But Dana Ford, no, <laughs> Dana Ford is, her, her source is saying this. I'm not sure if it's real or not, but everybody is, uh, is on this rave. I mean, in my mind, I think it should be possible just because light, you know, light is reflecting. So if you, it should not be able to see the mouse on the other side of the paper. It's on the other side of this clipboard. If uh, you should not be able to see, you should not be able to see the mouse on the other side of this clipboard. Yeah, if I put this up against, numbers. in my mind, it seems like the the light is coming off this and bouncing everywhere else, and that's how you ab are able to see the mouse on the other side of the mirror. But I don't know. To me, it makes sense how this could happen. It's just light is bouncing off everywhere. It's got to be a hard boiled egg or shelled egg. It can't be scrambled or over easy. But anyways, it's interesting. I guess if you do it and you can still see it, then yeah, I guess it's interesting. I, uh, and I also, I assume the camera of the, the phone camera probably has something to do with the reason you're seeing it, but I could be all wrong again. And in, in the simulation, anything can happen just like avatar bullying. Be careful. I mean, oh uh, yeah. Avatar raping. Yeah, Avatar Assault, AA. Pillaging. But I guess for Jim Carrey, it'd be 23, the number 23, and the Jim Carrey conspiracy. But he probably doesn't believe that anymore since now he's a Christian. So he, he, now he's probably a number five. Two plus three equals five. Five, 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 one, five. Gateway theory, CIA. Now we're back. So what else is on your tab? Well, another interesting character shows up on Pierce Morgan's show. This guy is a piece of broccoli. He identifies as broccoli, and he's not joking. Did he come on the show dressed as a piece of broccoli, like cosplay? <laughs> oh, look at him. It's Muppet Man. <laughs> wow, it's the... What was that, that song? Uh, we do this for you. Yeah. Oh, I do this for you. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like... That looks like straight propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> That's Edward Bernays in the flesh. Yeah. So are you saying he's like a climate change activist or something? Like broccoli makes us 
fart too much and we're producing all this methane gas. So he's trying to humanize broccoli. No, he's a, a part of a nonviolent international climate change movement, an extinction rebellion activist. And he was arrested holding up this sign saying that he was locally grown and environmentally friendly, but he identifies as a piece of broccoli. And Pierce Morgan asks him, so what do you do for work? And he's like, I just grow. GMO. <laughs> I just grow. And, you know, he fits right in with all this metaverse jive, too. He's going to be walking around, and there's going to be an avatar in there so you can become a, a piece of broccoli. And he's going to get metastasized. Yeah. yeah he's going to spread everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't shock me. Eventually, this is just going to lead to a- uh, plant rights. And then you're going to get the vegans mad. Because once you personify vegetables, you can't kill them because they're sentient now. You know, man, I got so many things in my mind. <laughs> you know, they just discovered, you know, one of the hardest things for people to figure out how to harvest or uh, commercialize farming is octopus. They finally figured out how to farm octopus. But octopus are pretty close for us to say they're sentient, like a dolphin. And so a lot of activists are saying we shouldn't do that. That'd be like harvesting cats or dogs. And the reason why we don't do that is because we believe they feel pain and they are sentient to certain emotions and feelings and they have their free choices, which I would argue everything pretty much does. I don't think vegans are evolutionists. I think they actually believe there is a separation between humans and animals. If they were actually evolutionists, they would actually see that, you know, a lion kills a gazelle. I mean, it's not like it's uncommon in nature. Yeah, well, what the whole point is that things just didn't magically just get here unless you want to believe in a religious construction. Well, do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? I'm saying everybody has a right to believe whatever they want. I'm not a thought police. I don't care what you believe in. But you can't play the stupid game where I'm going to pick and choose what I believe in. If you want to believe in some, believe whatever you want, but just believe that thing. But anyways... Salutes off to you, Broccoli Boy. Hopefully that you get a cape, you join the Minutemen group, and the Avengers that are attacking all our personal privacy and invading our freedom. Isn't there already an Avenger called the Green Jolly Green Giant or something? The Green Green Giant. Green Lantern. Be looked at before it gets metastasized. Yeah. Get that a millennial. <laughs> wow. and don't become post haste the last thing i wanted to bring up was a reiteration or a continuation of the same theme that this is a global takeover and it's happening now not 10 years not 20 years not 30 years it's happening now india is targeting more than 1 million cbdc users in the next three months for all you who don't know not just china and the chinese yuan But India has already established a digital currency, their CBDC, and they were anticipating only 500,000 members joining up by July. But now they're anticipating a million members. So they have already rolled out the initiation for their CBDCs. In India. In India. India and China are the two largest populated countries in the world. And they are the two countries who are initializing in reality CBDCs on a wide scale of things that actually could be legitimately used, not just Fugazi, like there's some abstract country out in the middle of nowhere that has an economy that's less than a pink sheet corporation here in America. Yeah, but they only have a million. That's spit change. It's just the introduction. It's just the start. And you know what's interesting? This program got started off in December. You know what else happened in December? In America, we initiated our pilot program of CBDCs in December here in America. And so did India. But they just initiated the reality of its use. And now they're having, they're planning on having over a million active users of their digital CBDC currency called CBDCR. So what's happening, I just want to acknowledge this so I can talk about it in a future episode. I'm not going to expand a lot on it. I'm just letting you guys know the activation of CBDCs are happening. And these people who I saw a video a couple of weeks ago talking about DeSantis in Florida saying, I'm going to make sure CBDCs. He doesn't have a right. He can't stop CBDCs. CBDCs is a federal currency. It's not like Florida is going to create its own money. 
Whatever the federal government decides to use as the currency, the United States have to use that to pay its debts. And so whatever the Federal Reserve decides to be a CBDC, Florida's not going to say, we're not taking it. You're going to have to take it. You're going to have to pay your taxes. The state's going to have to borrow money. If you want federal funding, it's going to come in CBDC funding. DeSantis is not going to reject federal funding when it has an emergency. Let's say FEMA comes along and says, oh, you had a hurricane and you need federal funding emergency money. It's going to come in CBDC form. You think the federal government, DeSantis, is going to say, oh, I'm not taking it. Of course he's going to take it. And he's going to have his federal CBDC. And if not, he's going to be a hypocrite. On the back part, taking the CBDCs from the Federal Reserve for, for an emergency through FEMA contributions while telling you, we're not taking CBDCs. We're going to stand up for your rights. While in the back corner, taking all the FEMA money, which are CBDCs. So it's all Fugazi. Whatever the government decides, the federal government. And if, yes, the Federal Reserve is not the federal government. It's a pi private entity to allocate the, the monetary policy of the government. But whatever they decide, the, the federal government will utilize that as the currency. And Florida is not going to be able to say, I'm not doing it. Of course, they're going to do it. And I'm just letting you know that the two largest populated nations in the earth, India and China, have already started. It's already begun. It's beginning. The time is nigh. 2030. Feel like it was over before it even started, though. America 2050. Look that up right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we want you to push stop, pause on this video. <laughs> and look it up right now, America uh, 2050. I mean, right now. Yeah. But anyways, that's all the time we have for this episode. It was jam-packed. It was great. We enjoy all your guys' contributions, your comments, helping us to get to 10,000. I was going back through the archives and seeing our videos where we were saying, you're riding along with us. Now we're at like 2,000. Now we're at 10,000 on YouTube. We appreciate all those subscribes, likes, shares. shares. Yeah, Fed now. Um, and keep on doing it. Help us. Keep on exposing the matrix. Join us for our lives. Chime on in. It's a great place to lay back and talk about the matrix, the simulation, the UBIs, the digital currency, a place where we can gather together. All while you're on the toilet. To figure out what we're going to do. On the toilet. While we're in this digital dystopia. Well, thank you for your time. And we'll see you guys here. Toilet Time TV. Toilet Zone. Next time.